What's up, recappers? Welcome back to the bar and the GCAP recap. I'm GCAP. Or am I? And why am I in such a heavy metal, headbanging, thrashing kind of mood today? Well, that has a lot to do with the content of today's recap I'm going to be doing for you, my friends. I teased the video I was going to be talking about in my last video I did on the jitters. So if you haven't watched that one, go check it out. And before I get started, to get segue backwards, for the GCAP recap, I have a goal in the next 30 days. I want to get to at least 50 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Please subscribe. If you like this video, please like it. And if you don't like it, you can unlike it too. <laughs> but I want to try to get to 50 subscribers. So I figured I would do my first GCAP recap giveaway. So uh, I don't know. I've been, I've been asking in the last few videos that if you, if you have a, a movie that you want me to recap, you know, and, and just please leave it in the comment section below. I'll take a look at it and then we'll figure that out. But I mean, like, what's the incentive for you, right? Like, I should be doing my own content, like, right? Right? What did it for you? Well, here you go. How about this? Here's, here's the rules, right? I'm going to be giving away a $20 gift card to Amazon. I know. I, you know, you, you'll be able to retire. <laughs> did you uh, win the lottery or something? No, but listen, it's $20, right? You can get a lot of stuff on $20 on Amazon. So for, for not a lot of real effort either. So if you, you know, if you have subscribed to the channel already, leave a comment below with a movie that you'd like me to recap. I don't care what it is. It could be a Hallmark movie. It could be a, a silent movie. Challenge me. I accept your challenge. But go ahead. I mean, anything. And if you're a new subscriber, please, same thing. Please, please subscribe. Leave me a comment that you subscribed. And then just, I don't know, give me any kind of movie. Just anything. doesn't matter. Just leave it in the comment section below. I'm going to do a random select. And the person that I pick, I'm going to do a recap on that movie, GCAP style. And I'm also going to send you that gift card. So, you know, give you a little bit of incentive. We'll help each other out. We're a team here at the recap. I'm going to give you a whole quarter. A okay? whole <laughs> quarter. So it's super easy. You subscribe, leave a quick comment, like it, whatever. The more stuff you do, the more chances you get. I'll do a random select. You know, I'll, I'll pull a name out of a hat or something. You get your movie recapped. You get 20 bucks. I hopefully get to 50 subscribers. So please, tell your friends. Tell them to come here and come check this out. And endure my banter. Have a couple drinks and some snacks while you're here. Stop being a bitch and come on. All right, now let's have some fun, right? So the movie in question I'm going to be recapping today is Black Roses. From 1988. I love Black Roses. I mean, it, it's, it's so, I don't know, it's a very short film. It's, it's, it's entertaining. It, it has music. It, it, there's a nostalgia factor in it for me. Uh, John Fasano. Ma Pazan. Aizan. Hey, how you doing? I'm Stevie B. Also directed it as well. There's a lot I want to go through on this. So let me get you guys all settled in and lick it up. First, we're going to get you your theme drink. There's a full glass of rosé wine. Little black skeletons on it. So I'm going to go ahead, get that down your gullet. Hey, and don't knock it. That's not a girly drink, man. Stuff will knock you on your ass. And what do I have for you food-wise? So there's no ass falling involved. Look at this. Homemade black bean dip. I got it all pureed with accompanying Tostito chips to dip. I haven't got the scoop kind, too, so you can get a, get a, nice, uh, get a nice chunk in there. I pureed it all up, but I also added some extra chunks of blackberries in there, so mm, that's so yummy. So you're probably like, what's the correlation to that, you know, for the movie? Like, why is that so themed? Well, I mean, at first I was going to have like a, a vase of black roses here, and I thought, you guys deserve better than that. I got, I got to take it up a level. I mean, I, that's, that's so cliche. That's so obvious. So check this out, right? Got the black bean dip. Got the rosé wine. Black rosé roses. Black roses. Black roses. Boom.
Okay, so now that you're all settled in, without further ado, let's get capping. Okay, so the film starts out with the band Black Roses, right, who kind of uh, appear to be a, like a budget <laughs> guar <laughs> with some of, these, some of the makeup effects. But anyway, um, you can kind of tell from the get-go that these, these guys are probably not up to you know, the best intentions. But they roll into this small little sleepy town of Mills Basin to, you know, start off this, this, this huge tour, this huge world tour. You know, they're a famous band and they're well known and they're finally going to get out of the studio and they start at Mills Basin for not just one show, not two shows, not three shows, but four shows. So I, I don't know what kind of, you know, money they think these people in this, you know, small town could be like forking up, but... You know, I mean, I just figure with, like, taking mass surprises and all that stuff. I mean, they're good. All right, right, right. I'm looking a little bit too much into this. <laughs> but either way, they're going to be there for a week. So we have a week of fun with the Black Roses. So anyway, the movie right away starts playing off of the, the whole hysteria and paranoia in the 80s with rock and roll bands, or, you know, like hard rock bands and, and, and heavy metal music and then, you know, being tied to devil worshipping and all that stuff. It's really unfortunate these bands were demonized around every corner. I mean, seriously. You know, uh, hard rock and heavy metal was, you know, perceived as the devil's music. Although I like to think the era of the devil's music started with the birth of autotune. One more time, as an energy, we gonna celebrate the love of them. One more time. Oh, shut up. You know, the parents' councils and school teachers and, you know, just basically people thinking that they're gonna, you know, come and ruin the, the brains of the children that are gonna be there by having these, these concerts. You know, like Black Rose is gonna rot their mind. I mean, I don't know why they would think that. I mean, maybe it's because they, like, roll into town in Lamborghinis and, you know, the lead singer's name's Damien and, you know, they start, you know, giving each other, like, you know, the devil horn symbols or, like, you know, throwing out NWO Wolfpack signs. Yeah, so unfortunately, while 2020 is going to be, you know, known as the year of the Karen, I mean, you know, it brought the Karen kind of people at a national scale. I mean, it gave them the name Karen. What are you going to do, Karen? That's not my name. To get my name straight. Go ahead. Right, and all the, all the Karening they do. Rules are rules, and they are there for a reason, and they are there to make sure that people follow them. And it is my job to make sure that you are following the rules. But, I mean, it's an old hat. While they have a name now, this is going back even, like, you know, in the 80s, around the time this movie was out. You know, you have, like, old, you know, biddies and busybodies trying to, like, shut down the kids from having fun. And Not gonna stand here and listen to this baloney. He won't, you know. He doesn't stand for baloney. You know, getting into people's business, getting people in trouble. And that, that's continued here. Black Roses has to, you know, endure this when they first arrived in Mills Basin, even though they haven't done anything yet. So a voice of reason to have Black Roses play in Mills Basin and not be banned or forced out comes in the form of the local high school English teacher, Mr. Morehouse, who's played by John Martin. You know, and he, you know, he's he's one of like the, the those cool teachers. He's like he's like a real cool guy. Oh, you're so cool, Brewster. <laughs> he's a cool guy. No, I mean, you know, he's a little curious, but, you know, he's just, he's just, his kids are good. They're really smart. They're really attentive students. They're straight-A students. They're worried about their midterms, you know, so got to let them blow off a little steam and have fun like, you know, he did. So he was very, very supportive of the band. Another voice of reason is Mayor Farnsworth, played by veteran actor Ken Swarfrey. You know, he encourages the council and the parents and all the Karens around there that, you know, when they were younger, their music was demonized by that previous generation. So... They don't want to make the same mistakes and, and, and put the kids through that. You know, they want, to, they want to be very modernized. That's the very nature of rock and roll, isn't it? Try to shake us up a little bit. And one of the many kudos I give this film is the fact that they had a mayor who was not the, the bad guy. You know, like Mayor Vaughn in Jaws, where, you know, he was just, no matter what was going on and all the bad stuff that was happening, he was just worried about the, you know, town making money, you know, like, no matter what the cost. Like, no, like, Mayor Farnsworth is legitimately a good guy in this movie. And another connection that Mr. Morehouse and Mayor Farnsworth have, too, is that Mr. Morehouse is dating the mayor's daughter. A little, 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 side, little side plot for later. He's, he's, like, a real good guy. He really cares about his students. Good teacher. 
He really seems to care. <laughs> about what, I have no idea. I don't know so much about putting their picture on his wall. Like, that's kind of weird, but... Yeah, and there's a, there's a, a pretty student in his class named Julie. Uh, he's a pretty big character in the movie, and, you know, she has a super crush on him. But his relationship and how he feels is very platonic. You know, he, he, he cares for her like a daughter. But Julie definitely has <laughs> deeper intentions <laughs> for their relationship. And even though there's nothing going on, there's, there's this running joke, like, you know, with other students in the class and... Hell, even Mr. Morehouse's girlfriend, you know, the mayor's daughter, like I said earlier, even she's making comments about them having like a little tryst. Oh, and especially your little teacher's pet. Leave Julie out of this. Oh, so you knew exactly who I meant. But nothing's going on with them at all. All the kids in the town, especially the few that are, you know, the more rebellious ones, yeah, you know, they're they're super pumped about Black Roses, you know, coming to town and, and going to the concerts. You know, I'd really like to make a Canadian tuxedo joke here, but. You know, I guess since this was filmed in Canada, I guess it'd be redundant. I guess it would just be called a, a tuxedo. So on the night of Black Roses' first concert, the mayor, Mr. Morehouse, the you know all the Karens and people worry that Black Roses are going to destroy the kids and the city and all that. They go down to you know check out the concert and do a deep dive assessment just to make sure everything's going to be okay. And you know, they do their assessment and make a judgment that everything's going to be fine. And they you know decide it's okay to leave. After only watching like 30 seconds of them perform. Listen, I don't know about you folks, but I have to get up early in the morning. I mean, the lead singer Damien doesn't even get to the chorus, I believe, before they're like, all right, everybody, good night. Well, anyway, they leave, and, you know, Black Rose is just left there with the kids, so we get to see the real Black Rose. Yeah, they, they like, you know, get out of their little get-up and get into all their, like, leather S&M looking stuff. You know, kind of looking like that old WWE team, The Ascension. This was an 80s thing. Anyway, they're, yeah, they're out there performing. You see they're there to raise hell. So, <laughs> literally. <laughs> raise hell. Raise hell. Oh, you're so cool, Brewster. <laughs> yeah, you see, like, they, they start going crazy, and the kids start going crazy, and, and yeah, it was, it was, it was everything they, they perceived. You know, I mean, even the next morning, you know, the, the kids are in class, and... You know, Mr. Morehouse is talking to them, and they're just, they're just not engaged, and they just, they just don't care, and they look tired. And he just figures, like, you know what, man, they, 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 they probably went out late, you know, go home, get some rest, and everything's going to be okay. However, when Julie lets him know that the band gave all the kids tickets for every single other show while they're going to be in town for absolutely free, kind of like the WCW 90s era, he starts to act on his uneasy feeling, and heads down to talk to the yeah. band's lead singer, Damien, just to get the full on one. But first. I can't believe I made a couple of WCW jokes in a review about Black Roses, of all things. But speaking of wrestling, all the kids start acting like crazy and getting all aggressive and, and fighting with each other. I mean, you know, even one guy decides he's going to do like the, the Lex Luger, Ultimate Warrior, Gorilla Press Slam. He's going for a slam. Anyway, Mr. Morehouse heads down to talk to Damien, played by none other than Sal Viviano. Another one of my paisans. Paisan. No, and Damien seems, like, really cool. I mean, they're, they're not even, like, hard rock partiers. Him and, him and Morehouse are sharing a glass of milk, you know, and Damien lets him know that they understand they were trying to be forced out of town and, and hopefully put the parents and the council and everybody at ease. You know, that they, 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 they he really wants to put a lot of positive messages in his song for, for the youth to, to bring everybody together. And, you know, that seems like everything checks the boxes for Morehouse until this happens. Wow, my God. Yikes. It's a little disappointed to find that his favorite student, Julie, is cutting class to go down to hang out with Damien. And I was disappointed. I was disappointed to find out that the main that Damien was rocking in those earlier concert scenes was was no, nothing more than a wig. Very disappointed. Very saddened by it. Very sad. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. 
But I do want to take a, a second to give a little shout out to Sal Viviano. Um, I gave him a shout out in the jitters. I thought he was great in that. Probably one of the reasons I actually really wanted to watch that, to, to see him in a lead role. Uh, I wish he was in it more, because he is one of the most memorable parts of the film, even though his, his screen time's kind of low. And he definitely had the, I'm just a working stiff kind of guy, making a living on a nice gimmick routine, like, down pat. Like, I totally would have believed him. Seemed too genuine. The milk really put it over the top. Shout out to milk. Shout out to all dairy. Nationwide, shout out to the farmers making milk. Shout out to cows. Shout out to cows for like for having to deal with it. Thank you, cows. Here's to you. Where in the hell are you getting this stuff from? And here's a nice surprise that comes in like out of nowhere in the middle of the movie. You know, one of the kids is uh, at home rocking out to their Black Roses record when all of a sudden their dad comes in to bust their balls. And the dad is played by none other than Vincent Pastore from The Sopranos. Big pussy himself. Yes, yes, yes. Another one of my paisans. Paisan. Jeez, man, this movie's like, like, like paisan mania for me. And what you gonna do when a paisan mania and the largest arms in the world run wild on you? And there, there, there's more paisans in this than the freaking Godfather. It seems. And he plays up the Italian stereotype that we all know and love Vincent for. Hey, what's going on? What? Gonna help your mother with the dishes. Oh, oh, cool. I mean, seriously, I was just waiting for him to bust out. I got bagul. What's this? An ear. This. An earring, pop. An earring. Only two kinds of men wear earrings. Pirates and... Whoa, 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 whoa. Easy, Vincent. This isn't uh, The Sopranos. You're not in the, the Bada Bing Club. It's 2020. Show a little respect. That's okay, because in the next couple minutes, justice is served as he, you know, is attacked by some insectoid creature that comes out of a speaker, which bites his face, yanks him, and pulls him into the speaker to be eaten. And it's easily one of the highlights of the film. And I guess that's why I like John Fasano's movie so much. It gives me the opportunity to say things I would never normally say in everyday life, like... Big Pussies from The Sopranos gets eaten by a speaker. What? And the more concerts they go to, the, you know, the, the stranger and stranger the kids keep acting. I mean, they go from just being aggressive to flat out, like, killing their own parents. Or, you know, seducing their, their friends' parents. That's right, Tina. We have daddy all to ourselves. Oh. Until they have heart attacks and die. Oh. Ah. Hell, even, like, the, their, their younger siblings are doing things like throwing their DC heroes into the fire, calling them the villains. DC sucks compared to Marvel. I mean, it's all very strange, and everyone's, like, freaking losing their minds. And, and this chick, I mean, she has, like, yet to blink. They don't understand what a great honor this is. And there's a poet alive today who writes rings around him. Damien. It makes me feel like screaming. I'd like to open a window and scream at the top of my lungs. May I? Uh, yes. Uh, that's, uh, that's cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> By the next show, Damien's plan has been fully announced, and the proverbial shit chat is hit the fan. Yeah, I mean, the kids start turning into demons or, like, something. And our main good girl, Julie, has completely gone full-blown heel at this point. I mean, first she kills one of her parentals off, I mean, even though he is kind of like a, a drunk douchebag. And he, she also makes sure to take care of competition over Mr. Morehouse by killing the mayor's daughter. She got it bad. She got it bad. She got it bad. She's hot, hot for teacher. Rest in peace, Eddie Van Halen. And Julie goes for the three-peat by visiting Mr. Morehouse to try to seduce him one last time. But when he rejects her advances, we're treated to another beloved John Fasano special effects moment. And this happens. So, yeah, I don't know what she was going for with this look. Like, she, you know, she didn't look, you know, very sexy before. She, she thought this would turn him on. I don't know about you, but to me, Mr. Morehouse looks like the kind of guy who would be into a nice, wholesome girl. You know, not a chick that looks like they've been, you know, 
pluck like a chicken before they get fried. Chicken ready to be fried, like fried chicken. No, 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 I'm not going to do it again, guys. I'm sorry. No, I, just, I need to move on. Sorry. Fried chicken, not roasted chicken. Kenny. That time's worth more than anything else we could ever give each other. Oh, guys, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I, I, I tried. I really tried. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe next time I'll work on it. I will, uh, I will try to do better. So in our film's exciting climax, Mr. Morehouse decides to take matters into his own hands and confront Damien and the band directly and put an end to this and, and hopefully save the kids. So Mr. Morehouse sneaks down to the stage and he's, you know, really relieved to see that Julie's there. So whatever he killed wasn't really Julie, it was like some kind of uh, demon doppelganger of hers. But, you know, Damien snips him out and grabs him and shows off his, his, his true form. And we're treated to another awesome John Fasano special effects extravaganza. Yeah, so Damien's true form here is a little upsetting. Mr. Morehouse expected to have, like, you know, a, a little man-to-man, uh, uh, -man, mano -y mano kind of one-on-one -on -one fight with with Damien, but then, like, Damien becomes this, like, creature. So, Mr. Morehouse, uh, ooh, <laughs> evens the odds. <laughs> so after Morehouse uh, hits him with the equalizer, <laughs> he sets the stage on fire, you know, surrounds the band, the, the kids snap out of it, and they, they, they run out of there screaming, and they, they don't remember anything that's happened, and Morehouse goes outside to talk to the mayor. And the band remains inside the burning concert hall with flames all around them, continuing to just rock out to the Lizzie Borden song. Kind of like how my Christmas party turned out last year after 3 a.m. The film comes to an end six months later when Mayor Farnsworth and Mr. Morehouse are watching a TV special news report on Black Roses. They're apparently back and must have survived the fire and they're ready to continue their tour Next stop, Madison Square Garden for sold-out shows. And it gave us a glimpse that they're going to do this demonic world domination thing on a much larger scale. And setting up and teasing us with a sequel that we wanted, but unfortunately we would just never get. So there you have it, Black Roses from 1988. John Fasano's finest work. No, definitely, I, I, would, I would encourage you to check it out. It's a little over 80 minutes. You know, kind of like all his movies, you can watch this movie and then move on with your day. You know, go rock out with your cock out afterwards. You know, the only question I really had for this film was around the music. The music's great. If you like music, you know, from that era, that genre, you know, um, yeah, you definitely go check it out. It's on Spotify. Um, it's kind of scattered everywhere. Somebody might have made a playlist, but um, it's really good. I, mean, you, I, I guess they have bands like... Liz, Lizzie Borden and, and some of these other bands, you know, do some original music, but, you know, in doing my research for the movie, I found out that uh, Sal Viviano, guy that plays Damien, he's like a world-renowned singer. I mean, I listen to some of his YouTube videos, and I mean, guy has a freaking amazing voice, and I'd love to just ask him, like, if that was the original intent was for him to, like, sing, since... He's an actor, but he's really kind of a singer, and, and he's playing a lead singer. I have all kinds of questions about, you know, his career and, uh, you know, his music career and, you know, the, the being in the jitters and being in Black Roses. is just, uh, I'm sure he's got some really, really uh, interesting stories. So, Sal, if you're watching this, let's talk, man. And I'll give a shout out. Charlie, Charlie, Charlie. Give a shout out to SalViviano.com, right? We're going to give a shout out to Sal Viviano's YouTube channel. Give a shout out to uh, Sal Viviano uh, uh, Perfectly Frank Tour. You know, Google that, search it out. Shout out to my boy Sal Viviano. SalViviano.com. And before we leave, I want to give a shout out to thank everybody for my support. That's right, New York. So shout out to at Freddy in Space. Shout out to uh, at Kim Fall. Shout out to uh, uh, ThreadX Savage on Instagram. Shout out to all my New York peeps. 
I knew I could count on New Yorkers for their support. No, in all honesty, I would love to do a Zoom duet with him. If people had just listened to our music, they'd see we have a humanistic message for the kids. You know, social and environmental concerns. I'll put you in touch with my agent. You'd be great. <laughs> I would genuinely love to do a duet with you via Zoom. I think we'd rock it. You're a famous guy. I've known your soul a long time. Aw, oh, thanks, Al. You're the man, dude. You're good. Real good. I'll give you that. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel the same. Best I ever come across. Well, thanks. I mean, jeez, man, all these compliments, you're going to make me blush. Oh, God, okay, all right. It's song time. We got to go. Okay, have a nice day. All right, everybody. Please remember to subscribe, like this video, and comment. Get your friends to come, subscribe and comment as well. Let me know the movie you want to G-cap recap and try to make yourself an easy $20. I guess you win the prize then. Next time, always remember, whenever you watch the G-cap recap, you always have a seat at the bar. On my recappers, till next time, I'll leave you with this tune based on the song Black Velvet. Bad kids, bad music. It goes a little something like this. Black roses, please like and subscribe. And Sal Viviano, let's talk, throw me a line. Get ready to watch new recaps this year. And black roses, in my heart I hold you dear. Whatever. Sit, Koopy, sit. Good dog. The Bluetooth device is ready to pair. The Bluetooth device is connected successfully. Huh?